you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question before listening on. In order to find the angle that this wheel rotates between t equals 0 and t equals 2 seconds, we can turn to the angular displacement formula, which tells us that the angular displacement is equal to the initial angular velocity times the time, plus 1 half multiplied by the angular acceleration times the time squared. Now we know that initially, or time zero, that the angular velocity of the wheel is two radians per second, so we can plug that in for omega i. To go from t equals zero to t equals two seconds is a total time, of course, of two seconds, so we can fill that in for the time. And then the angular acceleration is given to us as 3.5 radians per second squared. And if we boil that down on our calculators, we should get exactly 11 radians. Now the question also wants us to report our answer in revolutions, so we could make the following conversion, whereby one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians. And if we set it up in that manner, the radians will cancel, giving us 1.75 revolutions. So this would be the answer in revs, and then 11 radians is the other answer. For part b, to calculate the angular speed of the wheel at two seconds, we can use the following equation, where the final angular velocity is equal to the initial angular velocity plus the acceleration times the time. Again, the initial angular velocity was two radians per second. And then the angular acceleration is the 3.5 radians per second squared. And our time interval from zero to two seconds is two seconds. And when we compute that, we get nine radians per second. So this would be the correct answer to part B of the question. To solve part C, we can look at the following formula where the final angular velocity squared is equal to the initial angular velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the angular displacement. Now they're telling us in the question that the angular velocity in part B is doubling. Now we just found in part B an angular velocity of nine radians per second, but we'll have to double that. So we can write two times the nine radians per second for our final angular velocity, we'll square that the initial, be careful here, the initial is going to be the 9 radians per second. And the reason it's the 9 radians per second is because the question, if we read it carefully, is asking what angular displacement results when the angular speed found in part b doubles. And so we're assuming that after the wheel spins from 2 radians per second up to the 9 radians per second, we're then going to double the speed from that point forward. So in other words, we want to go from 9 radians per second up to the 18 radians per second. And this is the time interval during which we want the speed to double. And so we can see that the initial angular velocity of this time interval is 9 radians per second. So we just got to make sure we plug that in. And then the rest we can fill in because we know the angular acceleration is, again, 3.5 radians per second squared. And then we'll try to solve for the change in angular displacement. So we'll have to square both quantities that are being squared. We'll subtract the, the 9 squared over to the left side and then divide by 2 times 3.5. So when we crunch that down, we should get approximately 34.7. Now since everything was in its standard unit, that's going to be in radians. The question wants the unit in revolutions again. So we just go back to the fact that one revolution is 2 pi radians. And we end up with 5.52 revolutions. So this is the correct answer to part C. Now on to part D. Now we have to be careful here because the time interval is changing from 2 to 3 seconds. Now we recall at the 2 second mark that the angular velocity was equal to 9 radians per second. That was actually the result we had found back in part B. For this part of the question, that's actually going to be the initial angular velocity because that's the velocity at a time of 2 seconds. Once we establish that, we can go back and use the change in angular displacement formula, where we take the initial angular velocity times the time plus one half acceleration times time squared. As long as we plug in that nine radians per second, we'll be okay. The time, notice, is one second, because you're going from two to three seconds. And then the angular acceleration is a constant value of 3.5. So if we fill this into our calculator, we should get roughly 10.8 radians. So this is the correct answer to part D. To find the angular speed at the time of three seconds, we would essentially be looking for this final omega. And we can use the following rotational kinematics equation. So we just take the initial angular velocity of nine radians per second, add it to the acceleration multiplied by the time of one second. 
and we would get 12.5 radians per second. So this would be the correct answer to part E. So we've just established that the angular velocity is 12.5 radians per second when the time is three seconds. But now the question wants us to move beyond three seconds. It's asking us to calculate the magnitude of the angular speed two revolutions after the three seconds. So in that case, the three seconds will be the time for our initial angular velocity. And then we'll move forward in time to find the final angular speed. And so in order to do that, we have to change the two revolutions into the standard unit of radians. Once again, one revolution is two pi radians. And so we end up with four pi radians as our angular displacement. So we're going to use that angular displacement, the initial angular velocity, and the acceleration to determine the final angular speed. And to do that, we can use this equation from the rotational kinematics. And we'll actually have to take the square root of both sides. And then we'll fill in the known quantities. And when we crunch that down, we should get 15.6 radians per second. So this would be the correct answer to part F. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe. You can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.